morning, glad tidings. Welcome to our 8.30 online service. My name is Pastor Ruben. Come on, I'm John Carlo. And uh, we want to welcome you to our online service today. So uh, before we start with announcements, we want to mention a few things. Yes. Uh, first, like, because likes are good. That's right. Share, because sharing is caring. That's right. And three, comment and interact with us so that we know that you're watching, yes. so that you're uh in tune with what pastor is saying uh, and I'm um, during worship. It just keeps the chat alive That's right. and uh, interactions are good. That's so right. uh, another thing that we want to do uh, that some of us do already is hit the notification bell so that when you are, um, you know, just in your day-to-day -day stuff, you get a notification that we're live and you can jump in and join us for every single time that we go live. That's so. right, yeah, and interacting is important because Pastor Gary keeps a list of everybody that isn't interacting and we assume you're asleep and you don't want to be on that list. So make sure you're constantly interacting, right, Pastor Ruben? <laughs> anyway, so more announcements that we have for you guys. Um, next Sunday, April 21st, after the 1145, is going to be Growth Come Tracks. On. Growth Tracks is a great way for you to get connected into what God's doing through Glad Tidings. Right. Maybe you've been coming to GT for a month. Maybe you've been coming to GT for a year. There's no bad time right. to come to Growth Tracks and see what God is doing. It's really a time Jakey. where... Talk to me. Sorry to interrupt no, you. No, no. It's never an interruption. But uh, do you know when a good time to go to Growth Track is? When? Now. I love right, that. continue. I love that. So lunch will be provided. So if you come for anything, yeah. come for the free food. If you do want to sign oh. up, go ahead and talk to <laughs> Pastor Ruben or sign up at our website at okoegt.com. And again, like Pastor Ruben said, a great time to sign up is right now. Right. And uh, if you have kids uh, and you want to bring your kids, that is totally fine. We have child care. Yes. And we'll also be doing pizza and a movie for oh. all the kids. So uh, there's something for your kid and for you. Uh, so you have no excuse to miss out. That's so right. we want to see you here this month, and that is April 21st after our Arlen 45 service. Yeah. But after that, the uh, fourth Sunday of the month is Baptism Sunday. Yes. So if you want to make a public declaration of your faith and show people, hey, I'm making a commitment to changing my life, Baptism Sunday, Baptism Sunday is for you. Uh, that is uh, April 28th after our 1145 service. Uh, you can sign up here at the Next Step table or find me or find one of our leaders and we'll get you signed up. And uh, it's really a beautiful day. It's one of my favorite uh, Sundays of the month. Yes, so. it is awesome. And if you're thinking, oh, it's been too cold these past couple of Sundays, the water is heated, so you don't have to wait to be baptized until July or August. You can get baptized next Sunday. The water is heated, right? Oh, no. Somebody's going to get baptized <laughs> next Sunday, and they're never going to forgive me. Uh, I, I, do feel bad, uh, I do feel bad for the people that got baptized during, you know, February, December. Because it was like 40 degrees, and the water was probably like 20. Oh, but, but, hey, hey, it's part of it. That's so, right. Uh, we want to see you April 21st, April 28th. And there's so much stuff happening in May and June. Uh, even in April, so we want to have you guys stay tuned yes. and uh, stay connected with us. That's um, right. Hey, Janky, uh, this me. weekend is probably one of the biggest sports weekends of the year. Do it you know is. why? Yeah. Well, hold on. All right, process of elimination. Huh? The Masters? What is What sport is that? I, all I know is the Super Bowl and the World Cup, man. Well, the you Masters is uh, probably this. the biggest golf tournament of the world, so. Um, Hot take. So put down golf in the comment section <laughs> uh, who you want to win. And uh, we're excited uh, to watch that this afternoon. That's but right. for now, uh, we're going to jump into service yes. and uh, we'll see you guys then.
chapter 1 verse 15 says that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God that when we look at Jesus rightly we see who God is when we look at Jesus we see the compassion of God the love and the faithfulness of God so I wanted today, if we could start today's worship and just fixing our eyes onto Jesus. As we fix our eyes onto Jesus, we fix our eyes on the Almighty God that sustains all things, that sustains all of creation, sustains our life, sustains our breath. So I wanted today, can we lift our hands right here? Can you just right here fix your gaze? on to Jesus, think on his love and his compassion, think on his goodness and his mercy today. Oh, 
mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I Jesus, you sing it out. Say shout to, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing, sing it out today. Power and majesty, praise to the King, mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound. Say nothing, nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing, Lord, nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Yes, sir. Nothing, Lord.
today lift your hands toward heaven just give God thanks just lift your voice to God tell the Lord how much you love him how much you appreciate him how good how good he is father we love you today and we thank you we testify that we have witnessed your goodness in our lives we praise you we magnify your name and all of God's people said Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap off for today. Hey, God bless you. You may be seated just for a few moments.
Amen, amen. Come on, what a great time of worship. As you are grabbing your seat, go ahead, give a nice little compliment to the person next to you. Come on, tell them their hair looks good. If it's your wife, give them a nice little, just a wink. Come on, there we go. Give you some brownie points this morning, all my gentlemen in the room. Hey, we are so happy you are here at Glad Tidings. What a great time of worship. We're going to continue our worship shortly, but before we do so, uh, I want to welcome everybody who is here for the very first time. We are so happy you have joined us. Please do me and yourself the favor of either scanning the QR code right in front of your uh, chair. There's a QR code that gets you connected, or you can text the word guest to the number on the screen. You'll see that shortly there are going to be some black books that are passed around. That's just our way of making sure you're not just somebody, a stranger in a seat, uh, but you're a part of the family. We want to get connected with you, get to know you. So if it is your first time, please mark that black book and check off visitor. It'd be good to get to know you. After service, you can head out to the lobby so we can put a face to the phone number uh, and continue a journey with you. You can get further connected at our next steps table. I will also let you know, we've been in a phenomenal series um, and I think God's just been pushing us to more growth. I think God's been pushing us to get rooted and planted in some things. And we've got an opportunity on the 21st of April for everyone in the room who's just been feeling encouraged, convicted, and built up by the word this entire month. We call it Growth Tracks. And basically, Growth Track is a way for you to be a part of what God is doing in your city through Glad Tidings. We believe that you're not just somebody who fills a seat, but you've got a part of the mission and the purpose. And if you don't care about what God's doing, there's free lunch provided so you can hang out with us anyway uh, if you've never been before. And I believe by the end of that lunch, you will feel excited to be a part of what God's doing. So Growth Track is happening the 21st after the 1145 service. If you want more information, my friends, please head out the door after service to your left-hand side. We can answer any questions for you. Hoping you have a great Sunday. Love you guys. And thank you, Pastor Dennis. It's that time in our service that we're actually going to continue worship through our giving. And giving is an extension of our worship because it's what we're called to do by the Lord. And there's many ways that you can give. Uh, you can give online at wergt.com and uh, click the Give Online tab. You can also uh, give through text to give. Uh, you just text 73256. You text the word OKOEGT. A link comes back, or, or we are GT. Uh, a link comes back to you. Uh, and you just click that link, you fill the information out and get that set up. But you can also give in person, and that's how we like to give the most of all. Can we all stand together as we prepare to give? And we believe in decreeing and declaring uh, the word of God over our lives and over our finances. And so that's why every week we declare this over our lives. So can we just take a moment and say this in unison and decree this over our lives? Can we say, Father... Because I am a tither and a giver, I thank you for the rights and privileges you have given unto me to decree your word over my life. I therefore decree that I am blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am blessed in the city and in the field. I am blessed in my finances and blessed in the storehouses of my savings. I am blessed to be the lender, not the borrower. I am blessed to be the head and not the tail, and I am blessed to be above only and not beneath. As I commit my tithes and my offerings to you, I receive the promise of your blessings over my life. I speak your word that no demon in hell shall be able to hinder, delay, or stop your blessings upon my life. And I pray that you would use my tithes and my offering to help establish your word in the earth realm, cause lies delivered and changed, and bring in the hearts of souls to the kingdom of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hey, can we stay standing as we bring our tithe and offerings up front?
kingdom and into your ministry. So, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that this offering, God, will go the will be multiplied to meet the needs of your ministry. We pray, Lord, that your favor and blessing will be upon everything that GT is doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts for the message. Amen. You're ready for the word of God today? Amen. Hey, take your Bible out, whether it's in book form or digital form, and hold it high in the air. And we do this to position our hearts to, for the teaching and preaching of the word. So say this after me. This is my Bible, God's holy word. I am what it says I am. I will do what it says for me to do. I place myself under the authority of God's word. It says I am blessed, therefore I am blessed. It says I am healed, therefore I am healed. It says I am an overcomer, therefore I overcome. Every obstacle, every challenge, and every hindrance, through the name above every name, Jesus Christ. I open my heart and I open my mind to receive God's word. I receive this word, and I confess this word in the name of Jesus, amen. Now take that same Bible and turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Now remember our foundational passage for our series, Ready, Set, Grow, is 2 Corinthians 5.17. For the apostle Paul says this means... That anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. How many are thankful for the new life you have in Christ? How many are, are, are grateful that the old life is, is gone and you are a new person in Christ? Last week we spoke about new beginnings. And I am thankful for God's grace and for his mercy. I'm thankful for new beginnings. Last week, we spoke about embracing the change. And we do this by renewing our, our minds. And then we, we gave the challenge to, to plant seeds of positivity in our life and, 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 and living our life in faith. Well, today, we go to a familiar passage of scripture, Ephesians 2, verse 10. And if you are part of the Wednesday night, family night, we're going through the book of Ephesians, verse by verse, and we've looked at this verse already. Paul says, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So, we can do the things he planned for us long ago. Well, today we're going to talk about blossoming into God's design. Ready, set, grow. Let's do this thing. Amen? So in order to blossom into God's design, it involves many, many different things. But there's three things we're going to look at Today, the first is this, discovering your purpose. Discovering your purpose in Christ. Discovering your purpose as a follower of Christ, as a new creation, as God's masterpiece. And our thought is this, God has a unique and beautiful plan for each individual waiting to be discovered through alignment with his divine call. As we align ourselves with the Lord, we discover our purpose. In your notes, write this, understanding God's unique plan for you. 
You're so valuable to his kingdom. You're so valuable to the church. You're so valuable in, uh, in the family of God that the Lord has a unique plan just for you. Now, there's a, a famous verse, and I love this verse. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah records the words of the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. How many received that word today? Well, the prophet Jeremiah is speaking to the exiles. The Jewish people carried off into Babylonian exile, providing them with a message of encouragement and the promise for future despite their current circumstances. And how many know that when you're locked in a negative circumstance, it's so easy to lose sight of your purpose. It's so easy to lose sight of, uh, of, of, of hope when you're locked and surrounded by some negative uh, circumstances. Well, this was the Israelites when this word came. It reveals a powerful message of hope and assurance from the Lord to his people. So, so how do we discover our purpose? By embracing your calling and mission. In order to come into alignment with God's will, one has to embrace your calling and mission. And we see this throughout the earthly ministry of Jesus. I remember the words that Jesus spoke. John records them in his gospel, chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus said, my, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me they listen and they follow well, let's look at some examples the the calling of the first disciples to to be a part of the the band of brothers that were following christ that would be the apostles of uh, the early church in luke's gospel chapter 5 it opens up with the story of of Jesus teaching the crowds. The crowds have gathered around and he's by the, the seashore of Galilee and he sees some fishing boats and the owners are cleaning their nets and they fished all night, didn't catch anything. And, and Jesus speaks to one of the owners and it happens to be Peter and he says, he says, hey, let me borrow your boats so I can teach and push off from the shore. And it says that after he he had taught them, after he had finished speaking to them, he looked at Peter and he said, go out a little bit further and throw your nets out. Peter, being the fisherman, said, listen, we fished all night. We haven't caught anything. This is not the time of day to be fishing. Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, whatever you say, Lord, I will do. And he obeyed and suddenly the, the nets were full of fish, so much so he had to call his partners, and it not only filled his boat, but it filled their boat also. Peter was astounded. Peter realized the, the miracle, and he begged Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinner. It's amazing what the glory and the power of God does. It reveals our own weaknesses. Amen reveals our own inadequacies. Peter was standing in front of the one who created the heavens and the earth, and he felt his own inadequacy. But it's here when they get back to shore that it says as soon as they landed, verse 11, they left everything and followed Jesus. There was a decision. They left everything and followed Jesus. Write this name. Write the name Matthew. Matthew. You go down a few verses in chapter 5 of Luke again. In verse 27, it says, Jesus uh, left the town. He saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple. And immediately it says, so Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. 
Now notice the disciples, Peter and, 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 and Matthew and, and James and John, they had to leave something and they had to embrace something. They left the old and they embraced the new. Well, let's look at another example. What about the woman at the well? John chapter 4. Jesus is speaking to the woman at Jacob's well, the Samaritan woman. Verse 25, the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain, explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Verse 28, the woman left her water jar beside the well, ran back to the village telling everyone. Notice, telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. See, if we're going to discover our purpose, then we have to embrace the mission, we have to embrace the calling. God's calling us out of something to call us to something. Yeah. Now, this is going to surprise you. Write, write the demoniac. Now, this is going to surprise you, but I want you to see. We only know him. We don't know his name. We only know him by the description. He was a man possessed by demons. Mark chapter 5, verse 18. This is after he's been delivered. And the townspeople are begging Jesus. They're, they're fearful. They're begging him, leave, leave. They don't understand. They just know a miracle has happened. And it says as, as, as Jesus is getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family. Tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. Now, we learn something here because so often we want, to stay, we want to stay right at the feet of Jesus. We want to stay where it's comfortable. We want to stay where it's familiar. And this man naturally wanted to follow Jesus because he'd been delivered. A miracle had happened in his life. And Jesus said, no, you cannot go with me, but go back to your home. Tell your family, tell your neighbors, tell everyone what the Lord has done for you. Now, notice the description, verse 20. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. I submit to you that God has a purpose for your life. I submit to you that God is calling you to testify to the good things he has done in your life. We just sung about the song. We can testify the goodness of God. We've witnessed the goodness of God. Well, why have we witnessed his goodness? To hold it in? Just to feel good and to go home? No, to tell others about the good things the Lord can do in in their life. See, we've been created anew in Christ Jesus, and now we have a purpose in him, and that's to witness, that's to tell, that's to testify of the good things of uh, the Lord. So each one of these examples, the person or persons had to embrace the calling and the mission put before them. And I think this is so important, understanding who you are now. Not who you were, but who you are now. Now, remember our foundational passage for our series is anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. There was a worship song we used to sing years ago, who you say I am. Who you say I am. And it was written by Ben Field and Reuben Morgan. It's performed by Hillsong Worship Music Group. And the lyrics of the song go something like this. I am who you say I am. Whom the sun sets free. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I am a child of God. Yes, I 
am. How many remember that song? I am a child of God. Yes, I am. It has a powerful message that reminds us to understand who we are now in Christ Jesus. What does the word of God say about who we are? The word says, I am a child of God. The word says, I am chosen and I am loved. The word says, I am redeemed and forgiven. The word declares, I am free from condemnation. The word says, I am a new creation. The scriptures declare, I am victorious. I'm more than a conqueror. And it says, I am an heir of God's promises. You know what the word says you are now? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the word testifies that you are called to a purpose. And it's when you understand who you are now that you begin to discover your purpose and we begin to blossom into God's design for our lives. So blossoming into God's design for our lives involves discovering your purpose And secondly, it's about cultivating gifts. It's about cultivating gifts. The thought is this, nurturing the gifts and talents that God has planted in you is essential for spiritual growth and fulfilling your role in his kingdom. It begins with identifying and developing your spiritual gifts. Peter writes this in his first epistle, chapter 4, verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve others. Use them well. Now, let's take this verse, let's break it down just for a moment. Each of you. God has given each of you. So this speaks of a personal role, that we each have a role to play in God's kingdom. He didn't call you just to sit in the pew. He didn't call you just to, just to be in community. He called you to be ministers of reconciliation. He's called you to be light shining in the darkness. He's called you to be the light and the salt of the earth. So so each of you, this is singular, meaning you, each one of us, not some of us, but meaning all of us, not a few of us. It means you. We're so good at discounting our own role, but uplifting somebody else's role. And my aim today is to get you to see your role. My aim today is to see how valuable you are to the body of Christ, how valuable you are in this new beginning as we blossom into God's purpose and design for our life. This is personal, meaning it applies to you. You have a gift, you have a responsibility, and you have a job. You will stand before the Lord. You will stand before the Lord. Woe be it unto me, for me, if I don't, inform you that you're going to stand before the Lord and you're going to give an account with the gifts that God has placed within you. Did you allow them to lay dormant or did you allow them to blossom and to grow? Did you allow God to use you? See, if we're walking and going to walk in God's design for our lives, then we have to embrace our gifting and grow in our talents. Now notice what Peter says, we have received a gift from his variety of spiritual gifts. Some had the same gifting, but there are many giftings, a great variety, and you may have many and you might have several. Use them well, Peter says. Use them well. The old English, the King James says it this way, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The manifold meaning many, the manifold, the various. See, God has called his church to be a beautiful thing. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light to blossom into his his calling and his mission 
and to cultivate the gifts that he's placed within you. And sometimes we don't use those gifts because we have a very low self-image of ourselves. Now, how do you fix that when you don't feel very confident in who you are? Read the word, study the word. What does the word say about you now? Uh, see, we still live in the old. We lied the old to dictate who we are today. So, so we feel inferior. We feel incompetent. We feel like, well, God can use them, but he doesn't want to use me. Baloney, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. Your life, your talents, your gifting. So discover the purpose that God has for you. Use them well. Now, in what direction? To serve one another. This speaks to the direction of how and where we are to use our gifts. That's not to our own benefit, but to the benefit of others. By acknowledging, actively employing these gifts and service to others, individuals contribute to the unity and to the growth of the body of Christ. People love to talk about what's wrong with the church. People love to talk about what's wrong with the body of Christ. Well, guess what? Fix it. Fix it. <laughs> I always told my kids, it don't take, it don't take much much strength to be negative. It don't take much strength to identify what's wrong. It takes a lot of character yeah. and leadership ability to lead the change. So God's called you to lead the change. God's called you. So write this under B, using your gifts for the glory of God. So not only do we have a, a new life, but we have a new direction. And a new direction means we have a new purpose. So notice we have a new life, a new direction, and a new purpose. In Romans 12, the word says this in verse 6, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the gift of prophecy, then speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Now, you have the gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Bruce Barton gives some great advice in his commentary. He writes, we must be humble and encourage our partnership in the body of Christ. Only then can our gifts be used effectively. And only then can we appreciate others' gifts. God gives us gifts so we can build up his church. In order to use them effectively, we must realize that all gifts and abilities come from God. Understand that not everyone will have the same gift. And know that we are and know who you are and what you do best. And then dedicate your gifts to God's service, not to your personal success. Be willing to utilize your gifts wholeheartedly, not holding back anything from God's service. Sometimes we think we hurt the preacher if we hold our gifts back. Some of us have passive-aggressive tendencies. I'm mad at the preacher. I'm upset at the preacher. I'm mad at the church, so I'm going to show them I'm just going to sit there and just be like that. Hear me. You're not hurting me, you're hurting you. You're hurting the body. Because the church needs your gifts. Let me tell you what family is about. You don't walk out when you're mad at the family. You don't walk out on your kids when they disappoint you. You don't walk out on your spouse when you're, when you're upset. You work through it. You grow to be a healthy family unit. And that's what the church is all about. We work together. We grow together. And we say, God, I want to blossom into your goodness to what you desire. In my life, well, when the preacher's preaching, it gets quiet in here, don't it? Real quick, 
three steps. You know I was talking about the 10 o'clock crowd and not you, right? You know that. Just making sure. Now, when I get to 10 o'clock, I'll tell them, you know I was talking about the 8.30 crowd. <laughs> you know you know that's funny. <laughs> three steps to help cultivate our gifts. Let me give you a qualified statement. This is meant to happen within community. In community, we flesh out our walk with God. In community, we learn so much about ourselves, not just about somebody else. We really learn a lot about ourselves because, see, God's interested about changing you. God's interested about you blossoming in to his purpose and to his design. So God intends for you to live in community with others as Jesus did and we must do. And guess what? Eternity is going to be about living in community with the bride. So we better learn this thing now. Amen? Identify your gifts. Write this. Develop your skills. Invest time, effort, and honing and developing the gifts that, that's been identified. This may involve practicing them. It may involve uh, learning from mentors. It may involve seeking opportunities. Apply your gift in different settings. Let God use you in different areas. And then serve others with your gifts. This gets the onus off of you, and it gets it to where it's supposed to be on one another. Serve one another. It is in using our gifts that we cultivate them over time. It's a beautiful thing. So, so blossoming into God's design for our lives involves discovering your purpose. It involves cultivating your gifts. And finally, it involves growing where you are planted. Write that word, planted. Now, I want to challenge us. Trust in God's guidance. Trust in his provision it's going to enable you and I to thrive. It's going to enable you and I to flourish in any circumstance, bringing glory to his name through unwavering faith. Because not everything's going to be easy. Not everything is going to be a piece of cake. Sometimes there are going to be some resistance in life. And when you and I trust in God's guidance and we trust in his provision, it will enable us to thrive no matter what the circumstances are. Now, using the metaphor of a flower blossoming, we realize that the only way a flower can reach its full potential is by staying planted in good soil. Remain planted because that is where you're going to bloom. That is where you're going to grow. Now, in this, we learn by trusting God's provision and trusting God's guidance. Write those two words, provision and uh, guidance. It's a great verse in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 58, verse 11. The prophet says, the Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Now, the Crossway Classic Commentary writes this. Isaiah now describes uh, more clearly what he mentioned briefly and figuratively, that God will be their guide so that they will lack nothing for a full abundance of blessings. God is said to guide us when we actually feel that he goes before us as if he were to, 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 we were to place our eyes on him. He says, when you see that God is going before you and you visualize it, you will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fell. Keep your eyes on 
God. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on him. It's so easy to get your eyes off of him and to look at others and to look at sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so or this situation or that situation. Hear me, you'll dry up on the vine, but if you'll keep your eyes upon the king of kings and the Lord of lords and you realize he goes before you and he guides you, your life will be like a well-watered garden. Uh, it'll bring forth all kind of things, beautiful things, things that lend itself to sustenance, things that lend itself to healthiness. Isaiah continues to describe God's kindness, which he's displays to hoard us, toward us sincere worshipers, so that we may not seek the causes of barrenness anywhere but in ourselves. See, God's kindness never dries up, but always flows. If we do not stop its course by our own fault. And how do we do that? We get our eyes off of God and we get our eyes on people, right. on man, on others. We become filled with displeasure. We become filled with angst and hurt, frustration. We wake up one day and wonder why our life is, has no peace and why we're not really thriving. Because we quit looking at God who goes before us wow. and we're looking at someone else. Now, if you're going to blossom if you're going to blossom in God's house, if you're going to grow in this new life, then you've got to be planted because there's going to come some troubling times. There's going to come some, 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 some challenges. There's going to come some frictions. But when your eyes are on God, you're going to be okay because your life will be like a well-watered garden. He will take care of you. I promise God will provide for you. The enemy's going to attack you. The enemy's going to come against you. The enemy's going to shoot his fiery darts at you to get you off course, to get you to become discouraged. But when your eye is upon Jesus, your eyes upon God, because he's before you, he's guiding you, your life will be like a well-watered garden. Everything around you may be chaos, but there's blessing. There's blessing happening in your life because you're not looking at circumstances. You're not looking at man. You're not looking at people. You're looking at God. This speaks of fruit. It speaks of results. It speaks of sustenance. It speaks of growing where one is planted. You remember the words of Jesus? John records them in his gospel, chapter 15, verse 8. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. When you produce much fruit. See, by trusting in God, by allowing him to guide us, we will find ourselves thriving in adversity through faith. Write that word adversity. When you keep your eyes on God, you're producing fruit like a well-watered garden. Guess what? You're going to thrive in the midst of adversity. <laughs> People are going to look at you and say, why, why, why are you so blessed? Why your family seem, seem so blessed? Because they're looking at their own barren. And in the day, all you can say is, it's all God. It's all the Lord. I've just done my best to keep my eyes on God. Yeah. I've just done my best to keep my eyes on him. I've just done my best not to look at any to my right, to my left, not to look around me, 
Keep my eyes on God. It doesn't mean hard times haven't come. It doesn't mean there hasn't been some frustrating moments. It doesn't mean there hasn't been some trials. It doesn't mean there has not been some adversity. But I kept my eyes on Jesus. I kept my eyes on the Father. And church, when you keep your eyes on the Father, he's going to bless you. Your life will be like a well-watered garden. Tell me my God isn't good. Tell me my God isn't faithful. Trust him. Give your life to him. And you will blossom in the midst of adversity. You will grow in the midst of hardship. The enemy will come in one way, but he'll flee from you seven ways. He'll give, God will give you the ability to slay giants because you're looking at God and not others. There's been plenty of opportunity to look at others. But you have to be determined to keep looking at God. Adversity will come. Some due to the fact that we're now serving the Lord. And because we're serving the Lord, the enemy's radar is going off. <laughs> and he's going to begin attacking you. And sometimes adversity comes because of our own decisions. But hear me. Romans 8, 28, we're still the same. I love this verse. We know that God causes everything to work together for good, for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. This verse reassures you and me that God is actively working in every circumstance, whether good or challenging, to bring about ultimate good for those who are devoted to him and align with his purpose. And applying this to the concept of blossoming where you are planted involves understanding that God's hand is at work in your current situation even though it may be difficult or unexpected god can use the circumstance to shape you and to strengthen your faith and to ultimately lead you to a place of flourishing and growth because we know he is a good good father he's guiding you keep your eyes on him take your eyes off of others and put your eyes on the Lord. Take your eyes off your circumstances and put your eyes on him. This truth can inspire you to, to blossom and to thrive right where you are. Knowing that God is nurturing you, guiding you towards a beautiful, fruitful outcome. Yes, we're talking about blossoming into God's design, growing into this new life. How do we do that? By discovering your purpose. Everything changed when you met Jesus, whether you met him 50 years ago or you met him last week. Everything changes. Embrace God's plan for your life. Embrace his mission. Understand who you are now. Quit looking at who you were. See who you are now. You're chosen. You're loved by God. You're redeemed, forgiven. You're free from condemnation. You're more than a conqueror. You're victorious. You are now the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you are now called to a purpose. Make a decision to cultivate the gifts that God has given to you from his great variety of spiritual gifts, Peter says. Use them well. Use them well to serve others. Make a decision to grow. Grow where you're planted. 
And I feel this so strong because human nature is prone to looking at others, to looking at what's wrong or what we feel is wrong. God didn't call you to identify the things that are wrong. He called you to keep your eyes on him. Isaiah 58, 11, hey, keep your eyes on God. Set him before you as if he is guiding you, he is leading you, and you will become like a well-watered garden. Suddenly, perspective begins to change. Suddenly, your attitude begins to be affected. Suddenly, instead of bitterness and anger and being upset and being tight all the time, suddenly you begin to rejoice in the goodness of God and the faithfulness of the Lord. You begin to be refreshed by the, by, by, by the waters of the Holy Spirit and your life begins to blossom like a well-watered garden because your eyes are upon Him. Your eyes are upon the Father. Your eyes are upon the Holy Spirit and you realize that He'll cause every circumstance to work together for your good. The enemy may have tried to take you out. The enemy may be trying to harm you and to get you stuck, but you know God is working. You know God is moving, and he's going to turn that situation around. He's going to turn that problem around. So go ahead and glorify him. Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead. Keep your eyes on the Father. Can somebody give him praise today? Can somebody worship him today? Bless his name. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. 
what I want you to do this moment, I want you to shut yourself in. Do your best to shut everything else out. If you feel comfortable raising your hands, do that. I want you to picture the Father, Father God, going before you. I want you to picture everything around you, what the enemy's trying to do. Family may be in conflict. <laughs> World around us is crazy, but keep your eyes on God. Now see yourself as walking through that trial. See yourself as walking through that storm. See yourself as climbing that mountain. See yourself as overcoming. See yourself as healed. See yourself keeping your eyes upon the Father and you become like a well-watered garden. <laughs> instead, of the, instead of the dryness around you causing there to be drought within you, there's abundance taking place in your life. That's God. That's God. That's God working. That's God protecting you. That's God placing a hedge or protection around you. You're insulated by the presence of the Lord. Woo. <laughs> You're surrounded as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord surrounds those who trust in him. Father, we're covered. Now, Lord, in the midst of this hostile environment, we're going we're gonna to bloom, we're going to blossom, we're going to grow. God, because our eyes are upon you, not man. Now, Lord, help us to use the giftings, the callings, the, the gifts that you placed within us. Help us to cultivate them. Help us to grow in their use. And help us, Lord, help us to use them within the community of faith to build unity, to encourage, to help others to keep their eyes upon the Father. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap off for you today. Bless the Lord. Hey, will you stretch forth your hand toward the front as I speak this blessing over you? May the presence of God the Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, you all. <laughs> Embrace your calling. Embrace your new purpose. Now, now cultivate those gifts within the body of Christ. Live in community one with the other. Encourage one another and always keep your eyes fastened upon God. And your life will be like a well-watered garden. May the wind be gently upon your back. May the sun shine upon your face. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus be with you all. I now bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. God bless you.